how you attach the blade to the hilt or the handle is very important. And there are a number of different ways you can do that. Um, for a lot of working knives, it really doesn't matter. But if you're using a fighting knife, of course, it's going to be stressed more than uh, a lot of other working knives would be. Uh, so it's very important how your blade is attached to your hilt or your handle. And there's a number of different ways. Um, starting out originally, of course, you might have a piece of flint was stuck into a piece of antler or wood and then just tied with string. Um, that would have been one of the earliest ways. Or uh, some of the old, uh, uh, in the South Pacific, they'd stick shark teeth in, the, in a piece of wood, just pounded into the piece of wood, or use various adhesives. Um, so we'll work our way up from some of the more common methods of, of uh, attaching uh, your blade to your hilt uh, that you run into nowadays, modern ones. Now, back of the blade, you'll have a little piece called the tang. And that can be of varying lengths, widths, what have you. Uh, and so this is when you're hearing the tang. This is uh, the piece of blade that you were able to hang on to <laughs> originally when they were forging them. You could hang on to that while you pounded out, worked on the blade, had something to hang on to. And of course, it gives you something to attach the handle. Now, a lot of knives like this, uh, or the Gerber Mark II, for example, uh, the tang will be a very short piece of metal. And it will be attached. The handle is cast around it. In this case, this is a cast metal handle. Um, that's not the strongest method to use, um, depending on how long that tang is. Now, if it comes down substantially and it's a substantial piece of metal, it's not too bad. Uh, but usually they're quite short. That's sort of a, a cheap way to do it. Uh, and you get to banging it around, you put too much torque on it, that, that little piece is going to give up, especially if it's not attached uh, very well to whatever the cast material is. Now, another way they attach them is to have a completely separate, uh, there's virtually no tang to this. This is a hollow handle. So you've got an aluminum handle that's been soldered, brazed, glued, whatever, to the blade. And this is not a very strong method either. Uh, it's not a particularly strong method. Uh, Chris Reeves does some hollow handles where it's all of a piece. That's a, that's a fairly strong method, but in this case it's not. Uh, so that's one of the least strong. Uh, back in the Bronze Age, for example, they'd use quite a wide piece here and they'd rivet the blade to the handle. Um, and uh, interestingly enough, um, there was a manufacturing center in Denmark uh, that was still producing flint well into the bronze, well into the copper and bronze age. Uh, and uh, they were trying to compete and stay relevant. Uh, so they would copy some of the bronze designs. And you'll see some of their flint daggers. It's all a piece of flint, blade and, and handle. But it's got rivets carved into it to make it uh, appear <laughs> like the, the popular bronze knives of the age. But anyway, so this is one of the, again, one of the weaker methods of attaching. Now next up is what they call a rat tail tang. And uh, this is a, a full, so it's a, it's a narrow piece, it's like a bolt, but this is a full length rat tail tang. It goes all the way out to the end. And again, this can be attached any number of ways, including bolts, pins, whatever. But it does go all the way through. What you're counting on is the handle material to support the tang and then to come up and support the blade. So the material you're using and the fit is very important on a, on a full length rat tail. Um, this is plenty strong. Uh, it'll hold up. Uh, a lot of very fine knives are made with that, uh, that particular method. Uh, but again, it, it's a different method. It gives you obviously more support than a, a little tang, more support than simply being soldered or attached. Uh, and again, it, on the interior, you can run it through, tighten it up with your bolt or, your, or run your pin in or whatever, uh, but you can also put adhesives. And this is true of virtually all the handle materials. You can supplement that with adhesives. And some of the adhesives now are quite good. Some of the epoxies are very strong. Uh, they'll hold up as well as anything. And then they give structural support. They allow the handle materials to give structural support to the tang. Now next up is what they call the full tang. And essentially, knife and handle are all one piece, and then you've got scales of material attached to either side to give you some texture, some grip, fill it out a little bit. Uh, this is an excellent method. Full tang is, is just about as strong as it's going to get. Um, the next question is, what is the material putting on it, and how are you attaching it? In this case, they use rivets. Uh, and now rivets can be anything, uh, well, the Japanese swords, they used uh, pins made out of bamboo. Um, you see some of the Eck knives from World War II, uh, they actually use poured lead rivets, which, uh, you know, I, I got to question how well that's going to hold up. But they were just trying to crank knives out at that point. Um, I, I think you can buy them now where they've got steel, aluminum, uh, uh, brass, whatever kinds of rivets. But um, in this case, it looks like uh, it's probably either aluminum or steel. I'm not sure. But And I'm sure the scales were, in addition, 
put on with some adhesive. So what you do is you glue the scales on there, you put your rivets in there. The rivets relieve any uh, stresses front to back, you know, side to side, whatever, uh, any sideways stress on the adhesives, and then the adhesives just keep everything clamped together. Now another method is using screws, and full through Chicago screws, excellent method, it allows you to remove things if you need to. But again, it's a good idea uh, to use some adhesive, some epoxy, put your screws, and then you'll profile your scales to your handle, or even profile your handle on it's all of a piece. But that's just a different method of attaching, again, a full tang blade. Now the last, and probably the strongest, is again, just all one piece. This is just one piece of metal. Uh, it's not very nice for hanging on to, but this is probably the strongest uh, strongest method of attaching, obviously, blade to hilt is, is all of a piece. Uh, it's as strong as whatever material you're using, uh, and there's nothing to come loose, there's nothing to come. So that's maybe not the most useful, but probably the strongest. Uh, probably the best best method for most things is a full tang. Again, it's got approximately the same strength as all of a piece, front to back, and then your scales are what give you your texture and your grip. And then it's just a matter of how well you attach the scales and the one material you use for scales. Use, in this case, micarta. Uh, it's good solid material. It's got full through Chicago screws going all the way through, and then some adhesive in on top of that. And so this is going to be probably the, the uh, strongest and, and yet give you a good, good grip versus just a one piece. But that gives you an idea of how the blade interfaces with the hilt or the handle, how they're attached, uh, some of the more common methods, and working sort of from the least effective, uh, which would be just soldered, brazed, whatever, uh, very short tangs into whatever type of material you're using. It can be glued into wood or, in this case, cast handle, all the way up through a nice full tang with some good, good rivets or good uh, some screws going through there, one piece. And again, the rat tail full through rat tail, if it's done correctly, uh, it's as strong as anything out there. Um, for example, you're, uh, I've, I've got a couple of knockoffs of Randall number ones. Uh, the Randalls are as good as anything. Uh, and it allows you to have your uh, handle material go all the way around. It also um, may relieve a little bit of weight versus a full tang, but in a knife, it's that's not really that important. So it gives you an idea of the attachment methods for putting blade to handle hilt, whatever.